Hello my sound friends, today I'm going to show you how to take your sat nav radio that we hooked up in parts one. Oh, and we had an issue, so of course there's a part two, but this is the part three which shows you how to activate the voice commands. Directions. Voice recognition cancelled. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work. And why that is, is because we actually have to take this head unit and run two wires all the way back to this guy. And by this guy, this is the OnStar module, or better known as the VCIM. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to take the two wires, hook them up here, hook the two wires up to here, and activate this guy right there. Voice recognition canceled. Well... We'll figure it out. So stay tuned. If you're wondering where the vehicle communication integration module is, the VCIM, it's right here in the center of the top of your trunk. So I'm laying awkwardly in the back seat of my vehicle, got the seats down, and here is the other side of the VCIM, the more important part with all the connectors and such. And there's actually four screws that hold this thing in, and I'll show you how to dismantle this and remove it here in a second. Pretty much. You have a J1 connector, J2, J3, J4, and we will only be tapping into this J3 connector. Now, if your car is a 2009, it will have Bluetooth, which means you only have three of these. You have J1, 2, and 3, you won't have this. If it's a 2010 or 2011, it could be either or. Bluetooth was an option, so I believe it could be either a 3 or 4. But basically for this, doesn't matter if you have Bluetooth or not, we only need to utilize the J3. I don't have a factory plug like this. You may be able to find one online. I couldn't, so I went to the junkyard and I pulled this plug from a wrecked car, snipped it, and I have it right here. Unfortunately, it doesn't plug right up in here yet. So we're gonna take the Dremel, drill these keyways down a little bit, and see if we can modify it enough to fit in here. And once we can figure that out, then we can remove some of these wires because we're gonna go from all of these wires just to two. So let's modify this connector. Whenever I ground this down, I kind of ground it down a bit excessive and I lost the tab, but really it shouldn't make too much of a difference. But just note, whenever you do this, maybe don't go grinding down as grind happy as I did. Without that tab, it can actually eventually work its way loose, but it's actually still pretty tight in there. I used this one from the wrecked car. I got this one just in case because I wasn't sure at the time which one I needed. But if you go into a junkyard, this is the only one you need to modify. Here is this back speaker cover panel. We're going to pop off all of these little covers. Pop off very easily. And you can use a trim removal tool, but it's not necessarily required. I don't have to remove this panel in its entirety, but we just need to access these four bolts and we'll drop that VCIM down. I ended up removing this back panel, even though you don't have to, I just wanted to remove it so you get a better viewpoint of the VCIM from the top. There is four 10 millimeter bolts in each corner. You can remove those and then lifts up like such, and then we can unplug these connectors. push in the tab, pull outward, removes those, and then for the antennas, it's similar. There is a little tab on the bottom right there. Blue one is the same.
there you have it. Now we just need to remove this module from the bracket. And here it is. So let me show you what I found out. Originally, I was going to replace this VCIM. There's multiple different versions of these. The one that I wanted to replace it with was from a 2009 Saab 93 because all 2009 Saab 93s had Bluetooth. And there will be an additional one of these somewhere over here with some little plastic eye off of it, which is actually the Bluetooth antenna. And also, it only has up to three of these J plugs. That's the part number I had, and I wanted a cheap alternative to that. I don't necessarily need Bluetooth. I do have an adapter that I put in the cigarette lighter, and it's one that you set the station on the radio, set the station on the Bluetooth adapter, and it works flawlessly. Phone calls, streaming music, all kinds of stuff. So what I wanted was the voice commands, the voice recognition for the GPS system, and I thought I had to get a specific VCIM with that. So this is what I purchased. Same exact thing, just about from a 07 Avalanche. It's interesting spelling of that. Um, anyways, so it's near identical. And actually what I found out was that it is identical. I wasted $9 on this, which is no big deal. But when looking this part number up, you can see that it does in fact have OnStar and then with navigation. This is what was in the vehicle. Same part number. So, you actually don't even need to replace this VCIM OnStar computer if you're switching to navigation. So you just need to hook up the wires. So this is my failure. I honestly thought uh, entirely different, but this is in fact the same one. So that's kind of cool. Um, hopefully that saves you guys some money. And fortunately, I'm only out $9 for that one. So basically, I am just going to put this back inside the vehicle the way it came, and then we'll get to hooking up the wires. Another thing to mention about the VCIM, if you do swap this and you want to retain OnStar, you will need what's called a Tech 2. So you can just plug this in, say if you're upgrading to Bluetooth, you just plug everything in, everything will work like it should, with the exception of OnStar. So you will get a red light whenever you press the OnStar, and if you want it green, even though you don't use OnStar like myself, if I have a red light on there, even though I don't use OnStar, I want it resolved, I want it back to green. So you will need one of these machines. So not saying you can't just swap one of these in for like a Bluetooth one if you're upgrading and it won't work because it will, it's just you'll lose OnStar unless you sync it with the Tech 2. Now is by far the hardest part of the install. I have the radio removed right here. And the reasoning we have it removed is because we have to tap in and run two wires from this pin right here all the way back to that VCM. So what we're looking at is pin four, mic in positive, pin five, mic in negative. This pin that we need to tap into is actually the farthest pin right here. It's located right here. We need to find pin four and pin five. We're on the top row and it counts from this red wire. Red one, blue two, yellow three, green four, gray five. So these are the two wires that we need to tap in, whether you do a T-style connector to tap in for simplification, or if you actually solder it like I'm going to do, whatever, you just need to tap into it. So I have two wires right here that I'll be using to hook up, and actually I have these running all the way down behind the dash, all the way down here. So in part one, you have to hook up to the vehicle speed sensor. So I have this connector right here, which plugs into this pin which is this guy right here. That I previously ran a wire down to connect in the vehicle speed sensor right down there. But basically the two wires that I'm adding for the voice prompts, that follows that same wire all the way down here. And then basically I'm gonna have the two wires running back all the way to the VCIM, which is right there. So let's get to soldering. It's located right here. We need to find pin four and pin five. We're on the top row and it counts from this red wire. Red one, blue two, yellow three, green four, gray five. So these are the two wires that we need to tap in, whether you do a T style connector to tap in for simplification or if you actually solder it like I'm going to do, 
whatever, you just need to tap into it. So I have two wires right here that I'll be using to hook up, and actually I have these running all the way down behind the dash, all the way down here. So in part one, you have to hook up to the vehicle speed sensor. So I have this connector right here, which plugs into this pin, which is this guy right here. That I previously ran a wire down to connect in the vehicle speed sensor right down there. But basically the two wires that I'm adding for the voice prompts, that follows that same wire all the way down here. And then basically I'm gonna have the two wires running back all the way to the VCI amp, which is right there. So let's get to soldering. Everything is soldered up and taped back into place. What you probably saw there was what I was trying to do was use my fancy little stripper guys here and just take the wire and instead of breaking it and cutting it, just ever so slightly peel back the casing. That way I can take the new wire and kind of tee it into it, just wrap it around and solder it. Well, unfortunately the gray wire, it split apart. There's just too much pressure. So I had to kind of go with a different technique of soldering it, but, uh, here it is, it's all back together, soldered, taped up, nice and clean. The radio is ready to be plugged back in, put all of this stuff back, and then I can finish up with these two wires going all the way to the back. If you're wondering as far as colors goes, the wires up here, the green and the gray, I actually had a little bit of wire from a previous install. I was working on a vehicle and I had the exact same colors. It starts out with the green and the gray, and then I eventually switch to this red because I didn't have enough green. Green wire is actually going to my red wire here, and then the gray to the gray. So now I'm ready to put all this stuff back in and then run this wire and show you what to do with the VCM wires. This is the modified connector that I ended up dremeling down a little bit, maybe a little bit too far, but that's no big deal. And what pins we're going to utilize out of this is pin two and pin four. So looking at the connector, you have one, two, three, four. So there you go. And now I'm going to use a little keyway tool and remove the rest of these unused pins. Pins are removed, and actually it's super simple if you're using the same identical connector as the J1 plug, like I did from the junkyard and I just kind of modified it, but all you really need to do is this guy right here is pop that up, does not remove entirely, it just comes up just a fraction, I'd say like an eighth of an inch maybe, and then you're able to just tug on the back and pull these guys out. So actually really simple. Originally I was trying to use a set of these and a lot of times you take one of these pins and you shove it in the socket and then that way it releases but literally all you really need to do pop this guy up, tug on the back and then you're good. And then I ended up switching the wires around as far as like colors. So here you have it looking at the connector right here you have pin 2 and pin 4 flip it two and four so installation of these wires is super simple you just take it push it in the back you'll hear it click and then once you're done push that in so looking at the VCIM it's the J3 plug clips in like that and there you go pin two pin four red wire will go to my red wire and then this black one will go with the gray wire I have. So it should be on the radio pin 4 to pin 2, pin 5 to pin 4. 
So now I just need to throw this back in, solder these up to the two wires. Should be good. Then we can test. Wiring will follow up here. This is the back seat of the car. It'll follow up here, go through here, travel along, plugs right in to the J3 port. So everything else is hooked up. Now I'm ready to shoot the 10 millimeter bolts, put the trim panel back in, button it up, and we're done. I will admit, getting this trim panel back on is a bear. There's two clips one way down there one way down there by the window and it's just it's ridiculous to get it in so have it as flat as possible like this kind of slide it back and i kind of maneuvered it with this hole and then pushed it by like right here and i heard a clip in and then i was able to set this down and then you can put these three push pins back into place but my goodness that is not fun. So unless you absolutely have to, don't take this panel out. Just take those three push pins and then lift it up and then you can get to the 10 millimeter bolts there. But yeah, that was not fun. Moment of truth. Everything is put back together after taking the two wires up here, running them all the way back to the VCIM. So let's see what happens now when we press the voice prompt or voice command buttons. Display. Display night mode. Display auto. Display auto mode. All right, so it works. Now I don't really know all of the voice prompts to you know activate different things here um, i will need to find a manual to kind of see how all this works but there you go hooking those two wires up now you have the voice recognition and you can utilize these buttons so if you are doing this modification and you want to upgrade to the bluetooth this is a good time find a 2009 or newer with the bluetooth the vcim slash you know onstar module and upgrade it. It's a great time to do that. And then you can kind of utilize your phone with the Bluetooth and the navigations. This concludes part three. Part one, I ended up installing the sat nav. I showed you how to take the vehicle speed sensor wire, plug it into there, get the navigation working. Unfortunately, at the end of part one, I did realize I did have an issue with my used sat nav unit here. And I had an issue with the disk drive. It couldn't read the map disk. So I had a couple things in part two. And ultimately, I ended up taking a, another General Motors unit from a Saturn, and I robbed the disk drive and got it working. And then, of course, in part three, where I show you how to hook up the two wires and get the voice recognition working. So this is the end of the road. Hopefully, this video was super helpful. And on another side note, I do have two more videos about the SatNav unit in a Saab coming out. One being about the buttons, how to replace these, because of course they peel real bad. And then two, another video about how to get rid of the Saab map disc that you can't really update in North America and switch to a GM style one that is more readily available and of course more up to date with the map. So if this helped you, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe as well. If you're looking for Saab content or content in general, I have quite a bit of it. So I do appreciate you watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Like, subscribe, comment down below if you have any questions, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.